Hello and welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video where I'm going to go through lots of information today on IGCSE Maths Grade Boundaries. And you might be surprised by some of the information in this video, what it takes to get that A star, the A, B or C grade, how much it changes and varies over from year to year, and a few little tips and pieces that can help you predict exactly what you could be getting on the November 2022 exams or in 2023. So I'm going to go over to my analysis now of the exams and let's go and see exactly what you need to get. Okay, so as you can see here, I've taken the last 12, 13 exams here for the IGCSE 0580 course and I've worked out the grey boundaries for each. So I've taken together papers two and four together to give you that overall grey boundary for an A star, A, B and C. And hopefully you can see from the data here, I want to break one of those really big myths about the IGCSE exams, which is that the grey boundaries stay the same from year to year. And you can see here that is absolutely false. We've got a low grey boundary here. This is from a very recent exam, May 2022, variant one of just 67% to get that A star. Whereas you can see here in March 2022 and in November 2020, variant two, it took a 83% to get that A star. So I get lots of questions on the channel saying, okay, I think I've got this amount of points, this amount of points. Will that give me the A star, A, B, and C grade? And the key thing to take away here is it generally does depend. It can vary quite a lot. Now, with the 0607 course, that is very, very similar too. You can see that in front of you where we're getting at 88% on March 2021, whereas we can go down to as low as 73% to get that A star. So let's now get over to the prediction. So I mentioned this at the start of the video. Can I then predict exactly roughly what game brand you need to get an A star? And I've done the analysis down here. So I've worked out the mean average. As you can see here on average, so taking the average of all the exams in the last two years, you need 76% for an A star, 62% for an A, 48% for a B, and 34% for a C. Now I've also put down here a standard deviation deviation. If you're going to be doing A-level or IB, you'll certainly be seeing this concept. Uh, this allows me to see the spread of data. So you can see um, for the A star and A, there's slightly less spread than it is say, for a grade C. So there should be a sort of roundabout grade boundary within 5% of the figures that I said. So in normal terms, what that means is if you've got yourself over 80%, 85%, you can be pretty confident in most years that you will get an A star. Likewise, if you take an A grade, if you're getting around about 66% or so, 67%, then you're more or less guaranteeing yourself an A grade. So that's why the standard deviation is here very important because then you can see exactly how much flexibility you have on those grade boundaries on average through the last couple of years. Now, notice here 0607 is also very similar too. So again, if you're aiming for roughly about 85% on the 0607 course, this is taking the average of papers two, four, and six, you're on track to get that A star. Likewise, generally it's 64% for an A on average, but if you're getting 70% or more, you pretty much got that A grade in the bag. So this gives you a bit more data to work with. As you can see here, the lower grades are a bit more unpredictable on the extended papers. Now, my very last myth that I often hear from students on the YouTube channel is that variant two is more difficult than the rest. So I hear this quite often, the variant two, and you can see I've labeled the variants here, March is always variant two as well, generally have higher grade boundaries. Well, let's actually delve into the analysis of that. Now I've taken an average of all the variant two papers. You can see on average, there are a couple of percentage points higher, but within the standard deviation that I've given here as well. So in general, to take a conclusion from this, they are generally slightly higher, but only a couple of percentage points. And if you take the 0580 course here, which is out of 200, then a couple of percentage points isn't that many marks over the two papers. Likewise, if we look at 0607, again, with the variant two average, again, it's a couple of percentage points higher, but again, doesn't make that much difference getting between that A and A star. So that's a, the second myth I really wanted to break here, that the idea of variant two being so much harder is simply not true.
Okay, so what do you think about the analysis I've done here? Do you agree, disagree with the grey boundaries I've given here? Again, please leave a comment uh, below to let me know. Or if you want some advice on the 2023 papers coming up next year, then I can do a similar analysis once we've got the November 2022 grey boundaries. Maybe that will change the mean average slightly. And if you want to know about an overview of the IGCSE course in general, then do click on the video in front of you because I go through a good overall view of exactly what the course contains, how the papers work, and a lot of key information you may have forgotten about as you get towards your exams.